Hi friends, welcome back to All on Law. Today I'm going to talk about USMLE Perl, that's a temporal cortex. Temporal, temporal, sorry for this, okay, temporal cortex. So I'm going to talk about the important, pa uh, important functions for uh, related to USMLE examination. So let me quickly start this. A temporal cortex, you know, this is a part of our brain, right? So before starting a discussion, please do subscribe to our channel and please do share our videos and if you like, thumb up. Okay, let me start with this. First, the overall functions. Just remember the overall function. Overall function. Function. Or overall functions of temporal cortex. Okay, so what are the important functions you should remember remember the three things okay one is emotions it controls the emotions emotions okay not emoticons its emotions then memory then memory and language okay so language so it controls the three things one is the emotion memory and the language these are the basic functions of temporal cortex so if there is any injury to this area um, it will cause impairment in the language emotions or memory okay so first of all how the lesions how, how what do you call how the lesions how the trauma to the temporal cortex can occur is it can be by tumor okay it can be by tumor okay it can be by what you call uh, infections okay it can be through infections like uh, herpes infection okay um, and it can be also through the stroke okay it can be also through the stroke right so these are the important uh, what you call um, causes for a loss of function of a temporal cortex okay so let me tell you about the two things next important thing for example, if we have a two temporal lobes, right? Temporal cortex on the right side and the left side, right? So if the bilateral lesion, like if the lesion is affected on both the sides, here also and here also, at a time, then it causes dementia, remember. So sometimes it can be asked in USMLA examination if there's any, because if they give the MRI or a CAT scan of the head that, um, there is a bilateral lesion under both the temporal cortex, which of the following um, impairment can be seen in this patient. Okay, it's a dementia, remember, if bilateral. Okay, so now let's talk about the dominant lobe and the non-dominant lobe. The dominant lobe of temporal cortex, if it's involved, if non-dominant lobe is involved, what are the clinical findings we see? Okay, so before starting this, um, I would like to tell you one important point if there is any lesion in the rostral or the front left temporal lobe okay rostral or front left temporal lobe uh, there results in the deficit in what you call in a recalling or learning of a proper names remember this is also very important that's uh, if it affects a frontal or oh, sorry called the front part of the left temporal lobe okay right there it results in deficits in a recalling or learning of a proper names for example, in USML examination, they give the history and they tell you that he has a difficulty in recalling or learning of the proper names, which of the following could be the, uh, which of the following uh, may be the site of the lesion. So tr just remember, it's a rostral or a front part of the left temporal lobe. Okay, so let's talk about the dominant lobe and non-dominant lobe. If the dominant lobe is involved, if there is any lesion in the dominant lobe of the temporal cortex, then the patients will have delusions. Patients can have delusions. Okay, remember. Now the patients can also have hallucinations in the form of auditory. Hallucinations. Okay, in the form of auditory. Remember, he can have euphoria. He can have euphoria. Okay. There will be a, what you call a poor verbal comp uh, comprehension because of involvement of the 
one case area one case area is present in this temporal near the temporal cortex so um, if there's any lesion in this the patient will have poor verbal comprehension okay you can call it the involvement of Wernicke's area right so these are the things and uh, and the other thing I forgot to tell you is that there, there might be also what you call thought disorders okay thought disorders right so let's move on to the lesions of the non-dominant lobe non-dominant lobe if the non-dominant lobe is involved what are the clinical features we see in the patient is first remember is irritability irritability okay right irritability and there will be a dysphoria dysphoria okay so uh, the patient can also have a decreased visual or musical ability decreased visual visual or musical ability okay guys so these are all about the functions of temporal cortex thank you so much for watching this video um, please do subscribe to our channel and please do share our videos with your friends we're gonna cover most of the topics important for USMLE examination so that uh, it will help you to cover in your given time and it will give a kind of revision fast revision for you and it will help you to revise easily thank you so much for watching this video take care